Hey everybody, welcome to Radio Exotica FM. It is a beautiful evening here in Johannesburg, South Africa. It's 26 minutes past five and we have a spontaneous show for you guys. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. We've got some cool topics that are just straight off the bat and come from multiple people and multiple sources. Some of these topics are a little bit different. Some of these topics are a little bit weird, but I hope you will enjoy them nonetheless. The first topic that we have is on PewDiePie versus T-Series, the ever going battle. This thing has been going on for a long time with PewDiePie holding out a substantial lead against T-Series. Unfortunately, at the moment, T-Series has currently conquered PewDiePie's channel at the time of recording. Now, if PewDiePie does mount a comeback, it will be very, very difficult as T-Series is a multi-million dollar conglomerate and corporation that has many, many, many videos posted per day with up to 20 videos posted per day in very high quality, as well as music videos and trailers for Indian movies. For those of you who don't know who T-Series is, they are the world's largest Indian uh, subscribe channel on YouTube. They are a multi-multi-media service channel. They are incredible at what they do, but at the same time, they are definitely a corporation, and that is something that a lot of people have been afraid of uh, getting involved in YouTube, because if you take a look at the YouTube statistics now, a lot of corporations are actually working their way up the system, with the WWE having over 40 million subscribers currently, as well as T-Series now being, at the time of recording, the number one subscriber channel in the world. Now, YouTube has notoriously been known as the individual creator's basis. Now, the way that YouTube has always worked is that it's been the base for these individual creators. They create the content, you subscribe to the content, you enjoy the content, and that's how it works. With a corporation taking the number one spot, a lot of people have feared that instead, YouTube's going to go more corporate and become more of a business platform for corporations to advertise as opposed to a platform for individuals to create and express their artistic talents. Now, PewDiePie has stated many, many times, for those of you who don't know, that he doesn't really care who wins this battle. He's not in it for to be the number one subscribe channel. He said for years he'd rather be a smaller channel with less eyes on him, though he is very, very grateful for his 91 million plus subscribers. Now, he's currently approximately 8,000 subscribers behind T-Series, with that gap growing between 11,000 and 13,000 subscribers uh, every day until a PewDiePie video is posted. He has been going at an all-out pace, though, to keep things interesting with this uh, war between him and T-Series. One of the things that he's done is have... T-Series being lambasted by a lot of his subscribers and the subscribe to PewDiePie movement was created with Mr. Beast, a very famous, very well-known YouTuber in his own right, creating multiple different types of campaigns to keep PewDiePie alive. One of the things that he did was actually to go to the Super Bowl and have the subscribe to PewDiePie sign in the camera footage uh, sitting right behind in the middle for every single person to see. The other things that PewDiePie has done is have guys like Elon Musk, a world-famous engineer and owner of Tesla, and The Boring Company, for those of you who don't know The Boring Company, creating one of the most funny products on the web to purchase these days called Not a Flamethrower. He designed a flamethrower that is not a flamethrower since if he were to sell a flamethrower, it would be illegal. So when you get the box, you get this product that says, this is not a flamethrower, this is definitely not a flamethrower. When you open it up and connect it, it is 100% a flamethrower. But Elon Musk has hosted a thing called Meme Review, where you review memes and give them ratings. Now, PewDiePie has also had Blue Shirt Kid from India host Meme Review, as well as Ben Shapiro, the very controversial conservative talker and debater. Now, it's quite strange to have T-Series as the number one subscribe subscribe channel, but it is because the fact that India are getting more and more connected. India having over a billion people in their country, they have a lot more range and a lot more reach than PewDiePie himself, with a lot of people being able to subscribe to T-Series and loving T-Series because it represents India. On the one hand, it is good. It is nice to see other people coming into the fold. PewDiePie has held that title for over seven years. On the other hand, it is quite negative because you have an individual being dethroned by a multi, multi multi-million dollar corporation. Now, before we get on to our next topic, we're going to be playing some music, and we've got a few songs that we're going to be playing. The first one over here is by Alan Walker. It is an old classic. It's the original version of Faded, Fade by Alan Walker. Enjoy.
That was Fade by Alan Walker. Hope you guys enjoyed that song. It's one of my favorite songs because it just, it has such an amazing beat. And it was one of the songs that propelled Alan Walker from being a very, very good artist to being a phenomenal, world-renowned, multi-talented artist. Uh, Alan Walker is incredible at what he does. His remixes, his original songs, everything that he does is just incredible from start to finish. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that song. Now, moving on to our next topic, we're going to be talking a little bit about the World Surf League here on Radio Exotica FM. We have always been very avid fans of the World Surf League. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about is the fight for the world title in both the women's and the men's title race. Now, Tyler Wright in an interview recently stated that she is well on her way to becoming the Kelly Slater of the women's surf league. And I think that it's incredible because Tyler Wright has been nothing but phenomenal on her tour. She has taken on Courtney Conlog and Gilmore as well as uh, Tatiana Weston Webb in multiple tournaments and beat them all. Now, in the men's side of things, you have guys like Jordy Smith from South Africa and you have guys like John John Florence as well as Kelly Slater who's still competing even to this day. Now, unfortunately, Kelly Slater back in 2018 suffered a setback where he almost destroyed his entire ankle and had to go for surgery. And so that made him miss majority of the 2018 season. Now, whether or not he will be a full-time competitor coming into the 2020 season, we'll have to wait and see. But it looks like it's going very well. Now, one of the things that has been a major, major talking point recently is the idea that jo- that Jordy Smith is going to be competing in the Belito Pro. That is something that is phenomenal because the Belito Pro, for those of you who don't know, is a tournament that happens once a year in Belito near around about June, July, depending on when the season for the waves actually are, depending on the year. But one of the things that they do in the Belito Pro is actually have some of the most phenomenal surfing tournaments ever, though it is not in the highest tier of the surf league. It is actually in one of the qualifying leagues. Now, that being said, Jordy Smith being in the World Surf League and being such a name brand and being such a famous surfer, for him to go and compete in the Belito Pro would be nothing but phenomenal for the Belito Pro's recognition and exposure. Now, at the same time, however, you have guys like John John who says, Jordy Smith should be focusing mainly on the race for the world title, not these side tournaments. If you focus on these side tournaments, it could actually be to the detriment of Jordy because he'll be focused on winning that tournament instead of focusing on the main world title goal. Jordy has retorted saying that it doesn't really matter because in the end of the day, he's still going to be getting in good surf practice and he's still going to be getting a very high level of competition. Another talking point is the Natanya Surf uh, that happened recently with the Seat Natanya Surf Open. It is an amazing tournament that's been happening for a few years in the beautiful land of Netanya, Israel. Now, one of the things that happens there is that it's a Seat, which means it is the second tier of the World Surf League. It is just underneath the World Surf League. It is one of the qualifying schools to get into the World Surf League. And because of that, a lot of very, very talented up-and-comers and startups actually go and surf in, the, in Netanya. Now, while it doesn't have the most unbelievable waves because it is only the Mediterranean Sea as opposed to a real ocean, it is actually a phenomenal, phenomenal tournament. And I advise you guys all to go check out World Surf League on YouTube and find the Seat Natanya open because it is incredible and phenomenal to see what these guys can do with such small waves. Now, another thing, of course, is that the J-Bay Open every single year, the Corona J-Bay Open, is something to behold in this country. Anyone who's ever been to South Africa knows that Jeffreys Bay is the third best surf spot in the world, only behind Bondi in Australia and, of course, Pipe in Hawaii, Pipe being Pipeline, of course. Now, Pipeline is a talking point as well because this year Pipeline has been experiencing some major swells. And so we're going to have to see when they get to Pipe what it really is. The Pipeline Masters is going to be phenomenal and we're going to see what exactly they're going to cover. Now, the thing is that, of course, being this channel being a user-based channel we really want to know your opinion on this guys we want to know what you guys think we want to know what you guys uh, feel about the world surf league and feel about geordie smith's john john florence's or anyone else's chances of winning this tournament now we are going to go into another song and then after that we are going to be discussing a few more topics so stay tuned up next though is spirit is back enjoy
Hey, everybody, that was Spirit is back. Hope you enjoyed that song. But we are going to move on to something amazing. We are going to move on to a news topic right now, which we have been avoiding, let's say, for a while just to see how it goes. We've been gathering some research on this, and now we're going to be talking about it. So here is the... And in the latest news, the Mueller report has revealed that there's no connection between Donald Trump and sharing secrets secrets with Russia in terms of nuclear secrets. There was many, many people who speculated that Donald Trump was having secret meetings with Putin and the Russian government in order to sell secrets off or share information that is normally private and very, very top secret. However, after the reports had come out, it was revealed that Donald Trump had never shared any of these secrets. As a win for the Republicans, a lot of the people are saying that this could factor into how Trump's vote comes up in the next elections. One of the major impacts that this has is that the US now have an open forum to be able to actually call out the president and see exactly what is happening with the government. Now, in local reports in South Africa, there was a shooting happening in Eastgate and another one by Melrose Arch. Now, Melrose Arch was a little bit more deadly as the shooting was aimed at people, whereas the one by Eastgate was actually shot into the air. Multiple eyewitnesses stated that the shooters were shooting up into the air, um, and the reports say that it was in mourning of a taxi boss who had died in a taxi war. Now, one of the things that the police said is that while they do not condone this action at all. No arrests were made. And that is something very interesting because a lot of people are calling them out for that specific reason, stating that they should have arrested multiple people as they were wielding firearms and shooting up into the air, which is very, very dangerous. A lot of people could have gotten hurt, even though the shooting was not intended for any targets. You never know what could happen. In the other news, the Melrose Art shooting has been condemned and arrests were made and police are now investigating the reports of said shooters. The thing about the taxis is that I don't understand why any of this would happen. It doesn't seem logical to me to mourn someone by shooting guns into the air. It's a very, very dangerous way of mourning someone, and I do not believe that this could actually help in the long run. Another thing that has been happening recently is that there have been multiple people giving support and aid to the recent hurricane that rampaged parts of Africa. Now, the understanding is that a lot of people have been affected by this, and here at Radio Exotica FM, we send our condolences to anyone who is affected in any way and hope that immediately they get the support that they needed with people like Patrice Motsepe sending money and donations across. Now there have been some reports suggesting that there are multiple couriers sending items across such as microwaves, food and basic amenities such as toiletries across to Zimbabwe as the inflation has hiked prices over 150% on most of those items. There is a massive economic crash happening in Zimbabwe currently and people on the South African side are seemingly taking advantage of this. A lot of them have been known to send items in mass quantities across uh, under the guise of couriers, some illicitly, some legally. Now that is the news. Now, the next story that we're going to be talking about here, of course, is our final one for the day, and that is why exactly we decided to do the show. Now, here at Radio Exotic FM, we have always been very, very interested in user-based spontaneity and understanding. The way that you guys always work is that you guys want a lot of content, and I understand that completely. I think that it's very, very, very good to have a lot of content. I think it's very, very awesome, and the reason why there's not that much content is because it takes time to facilitate that content. However, here at Radio Exotic AFM, one of the things we're going to do in 2019 in the second quarter is we are going to change the way that Radio Exotica works. Instead of having a show specifically at a specific time, we will still have that, but we will also have random spontaneous shows that will be tweeted out beforehand. That way you guys can have a little bit of a surprise and a little bit of a happy moment when you can tune into Radio Exotic FM at 11 or 12 in the morning if uh, and sometimes late, late at night. Now, one of the craziest things that have been happening is that you guys have been requesting this for a long time, and that is to do a proper full-on video podcast. Now, unfortunately, that is not going to happen anytime soon. However, we are taking that into consideration. We do hear your concerns, and we do hear that you guys want to have more of an interaction face-to-face. However, what we will be doing is doing a long, one-hour-long every single month podcast that is specifically catered towards your topics and only your topics. Instead of doing a music show, instead of doing a small half an hour to 45 minute show, we are going to be doing a full on hour long podcast. We're going to be having guests. We are going to be having interviews. We are going to be having topics debated around in every single forum that you can possibly imagine. And so we want to hear for the first 
Radio Exotica FM hour-long podcast. What topics you guys want to hear and who would you love to see in the future as guests? Thank you so much, guys. We're going to go and sign off with one final song. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. As always, I have been DJ Twister. This has been Radio Exotica FM. Here is the final song. It is another one by Alan Walker. It is Spectre. Hope you guys enjoy. Here it is. And that was Spectre by Alan Walker. Now we are going to do some shout outs as always before ending the show. And our first shout out goes to Greeny from South Africa. And he says, hey, everybody, just wanted to say hi. And I hope that you have a great day. And that is really, really sweet. I hope that you have a great day as well, Greeny. Uh, the next shout out goes to Jojo. Shout out to Jojo, everybody. And then the final shout out goes to Judith from South Africa as well. Then we've got another shout out coming from outside of South Africa. We've got a shout out to Daniel Peterson from Connecticut. Hoping you're 
you're having a great day and shout out to you. Then we got another shout out to Alan. Alan says, hey, everybody, just wanted to say it's been awesome being part of this community and I hope you have a great day. That is really, really sweet, Alan. Thank you so much. And then there's another shout out to Nick, long time listener, of course. Nick has been with me since the beginning. So Nick, shout out to you. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, I have been DJ Twister once again signing off. Hope you guys have a great day and as always, love easy.